Hey, well, Doctor, when you go around and talk at Harvard and at Cornell and things like this, what are the questions that seem to be most on the minds of students today? Questions are very, very uh, uh, predictable. I could take a sheet of paper, Jim, and I'm sure you're experienced enough in this too. If I were to take a sheet of paper before I walked into an auditorium and wrote out 20 questions and you held it in your hand, you can pretty much check them out as they come. Uh, the first question, almost anywhere, as it was at Harvard too, uh, how can you talk about the existence of an all-loving and an all-perfect God when there is so much of evil in this world? Does it not strike you as contradictory that an all-loving and an all-powerful God allows such uh, moral evil, gratuitous evil? That is question number one that surfaced from the audience. Well, let's start with that then. What I'm sorry, I've got to leave now. <laughs> <laughs> no, that leave is, that with me, huh? <laughs> that's the difficult, most difficult, but I'll tell you I how what's Rabbi the way... Rabbi Kirshner's answer to that. What's <laughs> the way to... That's right. What's the way to deal with it? As I said to the student at Harvard, I said, stay with me for a moment now because I have some questions for you. I said, when you say just such a thing as, a, as good, aren't you assuming there's such a thing as evil? That is correct, he said. I said, when you say there's such a thing as evil, aren't you assuming there's such a thing as a moral law on the basis of which to differentiate between good uh -huh. and evil? When you say there's such a thing as evil, aren't you assuming there's such a thing as good? He said, yes. I said, when you say there's such a thing as good, aren't you assuming there's such a thing as a moral law on the basis of which to differentiate between good and evil? He accepted that. And I said, but if you posit such a thing as a moral law, you must posit a moral law giver, but that's whom you're trying to disprove, sir, and not prove. If there's no moral law giver, there's no moral law. If there's no moral law, there's no good. If there's no good, there's no evil. What is your question? <laughs> And the truth is, they smuggle in their assumptions yes. because it is unlivable, as I said earlier on. And in the, in the, in the Q&A, he stood there right in front in the Harvard audience. I said, you've just bought into my worldview. He said, I guess so. He is, as you see, Jim, the question self-destructs unless there is a God. So what you have to demonstrate is how with God who exists in this universe can you explain the reality of evil. And that of course takes you all the way to the cross and how in the message of the cross evil was dealt with, forgiveness was offered and the life of Christ comes and now lives within me to counter evil, to live for the good and stop the force of evil around us. Outside of God, not only is there no answer, even the question is not valid. With God, the question is valid and with the cross, the answer is efficacious. Well, I hope that all of you watching got that.